Good afternoon. This is a refresher lecture on APA citation. So first things first, I want to begin the discussion by, uh, before we go with the technicalities of APA citation, I want to begin by letting you understand why is there a need for APA citation and other citation styles that we have out there. So I want to begin with the concept of what we call as plagiarism. I know you've heard of plagiarism before with your other sub subjects already when you were in your senior high, junior high, but let's first um, dig deeper. What is plagiarism? Okay, so plagiarism, this one is definition provided by the University of Oxford. Actually, they have an entire website allotted for students to understand what plagiarism is. So they have, uh, but I, I just captured the essential part or the gist of the entire website. They defined in a paraphrased version, plagiarism is representing others' work as your own without proper credit. So in a quicker sense or in a shorter sense, it's your control C and control V. But there's nothing wrong with doing control C and control V. The problem here is that you represent the work that you have copied and pasted as your own. So in a nutshell, it's like you are it's not like it's you it is wherein you lied to your audience, to your readers, to the receiver of your output, and you made them believe intentionally or unintentionally that the work is yours. Now, what separates plagiarism from proper academic citation? The last two words says it, proper credit. That's why it's vital for us to give acknowledgement to whom or to the person, to the group of people who crafted that idea. Okay? So there are also other notions when we talk of plagiarism, but in a nutshell, this is how we define plagiarism. You represent an, a certain work, you turn it in, and then you tell that, hey, this is my work, when in fact, it's not really your, yours, okay? Now, other concepts that might be, that other concepts that are related when it comes to plagiarism. So first thing, let's look at this one. Self-plagiarism. Some might say, ma'am, is it possible to plagiarize? I mean, it's your own work. How come you will be doing self-plagiarism? Actually, there are certain writings about this, but this one is not thoroughly defined as to what extent or uh, as to what um, point wherein you can already consider something as self-plagiarized. But there are several writings forwarding that, yes, it's possible for you to commit a crime to yourself. So, parang kakaiba, right? So, yeah, it's possible that you can commit self-plagiarism. For example, you wrote a book. You have a book or you have an essay. And then, uh, in a certain subject, you have that essay about myself or what did I do during the pandemic, something like that. And then you submitted it in subject one. And then apparently after a semester or after a year, there's this specific subject or another subject that requires you to do the same thing. So what you did, you recycled it. You just simply, you know, accessed the file, submitted it again, and then that's it. So... Ma'am, there's nothing wrong with recycling, right? Yes, there's nothing wrong in doing so. Actually, certain researcher, researches and write-ups are encouraged to be um, reproduced or replicated. But the difference here is that when you recycle your own work, whether it may be an essay, a book, or a research, if you did not update it, 
and you made people believe that it's a totally different work again, that can be somehow considered as a self-plagiarized work. The thing here is that what you wrote, for example, you wrote something about yourself or your realizations after the pandemic, after one semester, may be different after a year. Same goes with books, wherein certain authors made students or made other academicians believe that there's something new with this book. That's why you have to buy this new edition of the book, wherein, you know, you just simply alter the cover or to a minimal um, academic input was given. Hence, somehow, we can assume that, yes, it is, it is self-plagiarized. And self-plagiarism is possible. Second, let's go now with the penalties when it comes to plagiarism. It's vital to reprimand violation to academic integrity. Yes, plagiarism is a crime against academic in, academic integrity or it. It's a crime against um, intellectual, it's against intellectual property rights. So, you know, our ideas are very much vital that most of us do not really appreciate how our ideas can be awesome in certain ways. Okay, so going back to penalties, there are various penalties when it comes to plagiarism. But then again, it is still on a gray matter because there's no uniform there's no uniform um no uniform um penalty given if you violated or if you have committed plagiarism or even self plagiarism it depends the the answer the best answer for this one is that it depends on the institution it depends on the um people that uh, forwards intellectual property rights wherein you've committed plagiarism. But in certain cases, the possibilities are you can be kicked out in the institution academically. You'll be, um, you'll be first, perhaps you'll be receiving a warning, second warning, and then perhaps it depends also on the teacher. But in certain institutions, uh, depending on the gravity of the plagiarized work for example a plagiarized research can lead for you to be you know for the disbarment or um for some for the institution to take back your diploma or the the degree that you have um worked on for years due to the gravity of the plagiarized work okay next one reasons well same goes with my answers with the first two points. Again, it depends. Okay, but we can look at it uh, on two general, uh, two general categories, which are intentional or unintentional. First, let's discuss the unintentional reasons for plagiarism. More likely, you're doing plagiarism, you're committing plagiarism unintentionally if you are unaware how to cite or if you do not know that you are committing plagiarism when you were in elementary you, more likely you don't know what's happening or you don't you do not know that you're already committing plagiarism but you know as you are as you familiarize yourself with concepts of plagiarism and citation it there will come a point wherein you know it's no it's no longer unintentional but it becomes in, intentional already you already have an idea at the back of your mind that you have to cite you have to acknowledge the source of your uh, work or the source of the idea or uh, the source wherein your ideas are supported that then that becomes intentional already now so we have ruled out the un, the unintentional reasons. Now let's how about intentional reasons. More likely, there are a lot of possibilities wherein you commit plagiarism intentionally. First, lack of time. 
but you know where is this lack of time coming from or the cramming where, wherein you cram and then you have no choice but you have to just simply copy paste itsy bitsy parts and then you just tweak the words you change um beautiful to gorgeous you use the thesaurus to you know make the work your own okay but you know if you look at the university of oxford website they have detailed out what are you know what are the instances wherein you're already committing plagiarism and it's really interesting and it's noteworthy to read about okay so intentional lack of time next perhaps you know you you're not that um confident with your thinking and this is a more and this is a sadder thing to look at i mean you know you gotta have some confidence with how you think with how you write that's why you have to go through the experience of writing. Do not take the shortcut because if you always take the shortcut, if you always take the easy way, your skill when it comes to writing will never be developed or will not develop further. Okay, so first time, second, lack of confidence with your writing. Another reason perhaps is that, you know, you just, you just simply, you don't want to think anymore. <laughs> You don't want to think because you're tired. And we all know that thinking is a um, tiresome act to do. So those are the possible intentional reasons. I'm just um, citing some of the basic and the most common reasons forwarded by my former students when we were discussing plagiarism. Okay. Now, here's the interesting part, and this is where we'll lead to the gist or to the main topic of our discussion. How to combat plagiarism, you know, thinking of it as if it's a pandemic. Perhaps it can be a pandemic to one's intellect, right? So how do we combat plagiarism? And there are various means of avoiding um, this crime against intellectual property rights, okay? Well, uh, easy way is first, you have to be aware of the fact that w you have to be aware with what plagiarism is, right? So that you know you're already committing it. So that you know or you will no longer be excused by saying, oh, I did it unintentionally. So first thing to do is awareness and information knowing if you're already doing it or not doing it okay next one second is of course knowing how to properly credit the source of your knowledge or the source of the supporting details in your discussion which is through citation so we're going now with the APA part okay but first things first um, APA is not the only citation style in this world. There are various citation styles and there are various ways of acknowledging others, okay, and combating um, plagiarism. So I'll, I'll be mentioning the three common here. So first, and also perhaps I can cite the other um, citation styles that, um, that are used, but these um, these three are commonly used here in the Philippines. So we have MLA, or also known as Modern Langu Language Association. It's really funny that students are um, aware of these citation styles. I assume, and I'm hoping that these are already mentioned or discussed when you were in high school. So when I ask my students, so what do you, what do we mean by MLA, or what does MLA stand for? So I guess. It's worthy to know what these acronym, acronyms stand for. We have Modern Language Association, MLA in short, okay? MLA is used more on the field of language, arts, cultural studies, humanities discipline, okay? So the turf of humanities, okay? And then next one, we have Chicago Manual of Style or CMOS or sometimes some books, some books, they call it as Chicago Manual Style or Chicago Style of Citation. But once you hear Chicago, oh yeah, you know that it's a different thing already, okay? Chicago, on the other hand, focuses on literature, history, and of the arts, okay? So 
MLA, my arts then. Si Chicago, my arts then. Okay, so I'll let you know why. Why are there overlapping um, focus when it comes to the citation styles? And then, of course, the topic for this discussion is APA, or also known as American Psychological Association. Then again, okay, uh, the the American Psychological Association citation is different from the American Psychological Association. I mean, the group of psychologists in America, literally. Okay, so of course, it's a different when you add in the idea of citation style. Okay, so these are the common citation styles used here in the Philippines, and there are also other citation styles like. AMA, oh, this is not the school that um, Daniel Padilla and formerly Marvin Agustin. During my time, it was Marvin Agustin. But okay, anyways, what's the point of discussing that? So AMA, okay, not the school, okay. AMA stands for American Medical Association Citation Style. So that's in the field of mm, medicine or sciences. And then we also have one, another one in the field of sciences, which is CSE, Council of Science Editors. Okay. And um, upon reviewing my knowledge when it comes to citation, preparing for this lecture, I found out that there is this new citation style. It's I E E E. So there's three E. I E E E. Okay. It's Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineer Citation Style. So, wow, I didn't know. Perhaps you know that uh, the focus are more on the specific fields coming from the name of the citation styles. Um, CSE is more on the field of biology. Okay, yeah, of course, sciences. Okay, now. Some of you might be asking right now, Ma'am, bakit po ang daming specific? Why, why are there different citation styles? Well, basically, it has something to do with the specialization, the focus, or the field of focus. Okay? And there are certain cases wherein it overlaps. Now, how do we know which citation style you use? Well, the answer here is that it depends. It depends on the college, it depends on the university, it depends on the department, and even up to the level of the teacher and students that decided which citation style are we going to use. But more likely, if um, the university or the school forwards which citation style is usually um, preferred or used for researches published under the school or in the school. Okay, so for example, in UP, in the College of Arts and Sciences, in the Speech Communication, the, the Department of Speech Communication and Theater Arts, okay, we use APA, and that's where, I, that's where I'm used to. And for example, in the future, if you want to publish your paper, it depends on the publishing um, group, company, or the journal, okay, uh, they usually tell which um, citation style they use in their publication, in their journal. Okay, so it doesn't hurt to familiarize yourself with various citation styles. Okay, and who knows, in the future, you know, we'll never know what might happen. For example, there might be more citation styles coming in, or there might be um, an act wherein they intend to unify all citation styles and just come up with one. So we'll never know. That's why it doesn't hurt to be familiarized with various citation styles. Okay. So for this discussion, we're going to have APA citation. Okay. So APA citation, American Psychological Association citation, the discussion, the discussion of APA citation that we're going to have is the seventh edition okay so in the future if you'll be going back to this discussion just double check which citation style or which um edition are we following perhaps in the future there might be um changes all right now what will be the outline of our discussion when it comes to the technicalities of the apa citation so 
more likely, I'll be discussing a lot of technical stuff when it comes to APA citation. First, we talk of in-text citation, the citation that you use or how you cite in the body of your paper, okay, or in the actual pages of your research or of your essay, perhaps, okay? In the body, that's what we call as in-text citation and then after the body you have the references okay of course so or the bibliographic citation how do you cite at the end remember when you look at books there are bibliography or sometimes they use the term references works cited so that's bibliographic or reference citation so we're going to discuss just the basic okay i have three here citing a book citing an electronic source or an online source, and then how do you cite video from YouTube? But there are a lot of sources wherein how you will cite um, bibliographically. And then in in-text citation, we're going to discuss paraphrasing, wherein you um, synthesize the thing that you got or the, the data that you read from your source. You summarized it, you paraphrased it, you used your own words. You didn't just simply tweak or change certain words, okay? How do you apply parenthetical citation? And of course, most of your favorite will be direct quotation. How do you cite direct quotations? How do you do it with it's a long quotation or a short quotation? We'll be running through that a little later. Okay, so we have two, all right? In-text citation in the body. And then reference in the bibliography uh, in the bibliography part, okay. And then we'll run through the general format. A lot of students uh, still ask and message, ma'am, um, what is APA? I mean, what format are we going to use in our paper? And then I just simply respond, we use APA format. And then the student will message again, ma'am, ano po ang font style? What's the font style for APA? Font size? pagination something like that okay so of course APA when you talk of APA citation format or citation style it has a prescribed format already and we're going to discuss what are these specifics okay parts of a fully blown not fully blown full blown paper font size style spacing alignment and then we have the running head and page header most of the time people are unaware that there is there should be a running head and page header. And that's why it's easier for me as a teacher to know if the student utilized APA format um, religiously. You can see it by the cover page pa lang. You'll see it in the cover page that there's a running head and there's a page header along the pages of the submission, even if it's just two to three pages, page submission. Okay? So, and of course, we'll cap it off with future references. Um, I'll be presenting uh, communication tools, okay, presentations of communication tools or report speeches and more, okay, future references, okay. So, just in case, my discussion in this lecture will be obsolete in the future, okay. How will you, what are the other tools that you can rely on? All right, or which website where you can go to. All right, so let's begin. I hope you are ready. First up, we have in-text citation. Okay, hold on, my PowerPoint is, okay. All right, so first thing when it comes to in-text citation, we have paraphrasing and parenthetical citation. So, for example, you have paraphrased, you've summarized the note from author, author A. Okay, so author A said that this thing should be done, something, okay. Sample text discussion. So, we'll just capture it with these words. Sample text discussion. Right after the paraphrased thought, not necessarily end of the sentence or end of the paragraph, but usually it's where it depends on your writing style. Style, okay, but usually at the end of the paraphrase thought, you put in the parenthetical citation. Okay, so the last name of the author, 
Okay? So, I've used here defensor. Last name of the author, comma, space, then the year of publication of the work. Then closing parenthesis, and then the period. Okay, sorry, I'm too technical when it comes to the spacing, the punctuation marks, because it it's vital, okay? We're talking of format here, and I hope you understand that I'm more of a um, Nazi when it comes to formatting, all right? All right, so again, the paraphrase work, and then after the thought, put in the, the last name of the author or authors, and then you put in comma, space, the year of publication, and then closing parenthesis, then the period. And then sometimes, depending on the writing style, other writers use signal phrase, okay? Signal phrase wherein where they'll discuss, the they'll do um, their own discussion, the, their paraphrase discussion. So this can also work, the second bullet. According to Defensor, and then, when you mention the name of the author, do not forget the publication of work, okay? 2019, this is a sample text, so the sample discussion that you're going to have, okay? So, this is just the basic when it comes to parenthetical citation, paraphrasing, when we talk of in-text citation. Next one, I hope you're still okay, okay? So, after paraphrasing and parenthetical citation let's talk on your favorite which is direct quotation the usual i think most of you are very familiar with this one in text citation and then you directly quote now when is it okay ma'am to use direct quotation or ma'am when is it that i have to paraphrase again the answer there depends on you as a reader depends on depends on you as a writer if you think the gravity of the words of the author is very much vital, I mean, you cannot replace you cannot replace the the essential words that were used by the author. That's the time wherein you can use the recotation. Okay, so you copy it verbatimly. Kapag may if there's something wrong with the grammar of the author, still you have to copy it. Then you just have to correct it with a bracket. Okay, so of course you have to read more on that. But okay, most of the time the direct quotation is abused by certain writers or sometimes for newbie writers. So do not just simply copy copy it. So sometimes I read essays like it's a hodgepodge of direct quotation. Of course, do not abuse the power of direct quotation. You only use direct quotation if you think the words are very much vital, but if you can, you know paraphrase it, say it from your own understanding, your own words, might as well, you know, you do paraphrasing, okay? All right, so here's a sample of short direct quotation. So here's the signal phrase, according to Defensor, 2013, and then you um, identify the direct quotation. So direct quotation that is short is um, introduced by quotation mark. Okay, and then sample and discussion. And then the difference when it comes to citing direct quotation, you, in, you include the page number where you got, where the reader will see the direct quotation. Okay, so page number. And then, okay, other version of doing direct quotation, you may do this. The author added, hindi lahat ng sweet ay loyal sa iyo. Okay, and then, closing, close quotation mark. And then, the last name of the author, comma, space, year of publication, comma, space. And then, for example, it, it, um, the direct quotation is, uh, is cut from a page and then it's moved or continued to another page. Or you have to cite, several pages you use double p period and then the inclusion of the of the page numbers so if it's just a single page you just use one p okay all right so you just simply follow the rules of um doing direct quotation now 
we all aside from short direct quotation we also have direct quotation that is long okay so i just screenshot it because it's a lot easier to show it in uh, word format okay so last one when it comes to in-text citation we have long direct quotation so yes you can cite lengthy um, words or verbatimly from the author if it's really essential. For example, a certain paragraph of discussed by Jose Rizal, by, um, uh, for example, words of uh, the president or a notable person. If it's really vital, yeah, you can cite it. You can cite the long part of the discussion or you can do it direct. You can do direct quotation with that. Okay, so here's the sample. Okay, so sample discussion here, and then the blue part, I hope you can, still, you can see it. The blue part, okay, Defensor 2013 stated that, so the blue part is the signal phrase, okay? And then I usually apply colon to introduce the direct quotation that is long. And then the red part here, this is the direct quotation, the long direct quotation, I copy this verbatimly from the author. Now, what will make you say, ma'am, that it's a long or if it's a short? Um, according to APA website that I rely on, that I'll be mentioning later, if it exceeds more than 40 words, it's already considered a long quotation. So, of course, in Microsoft Word, it's, there's a word count already. So, it's a lot easier. So, you don't need to count it anymore. So, if it exceeds... 40 40 words that's the time it's considered direct long direct quotation already now what are you going to do if it's a long direct quotation so you don't use quotation marks anymore and then you have to indent it you have to indent it and then to the left okay so on, only on the left side with the previous versions of APA and what with what I do with my master's research okay I indented it left and right but apparently when I updated myself with APA citation I found out that you have to indent only on the left okay left it has to be indented one half inch or in centimeters it's 1.3 it's actually 1.27 centimeters but you know you do the round round up okay so yeah i converted it for you so one half inch or 1.3 centimeters okay and then do not forget okay basic rule when it comes to direct quotation do not forget the page number okay or the pages okay so you still apply parenthetical citation or you can have it here defensor comma space 2013 comma space pages 45 to 46 if you did not use a signal phrase at the beginning okay it falls again on your writing style okay or how you how your thoughts flow when you write okay so you'll you'll get a grasp of what your what your writing style is once you practice further okay all right so we're done with in-text citation we're now moving to reference list so at the bottom okay or at the end of your body right after the last page of your body you follow it with reference list okay now okay my my lap my um powerpoint is booting okay so here reference list okay so a lot of students are asking what term should we use okay there are various um, terms used like works cited, bibliography, but in APA, we use only references, only the word references, or if you only have one, it's just reference, but we don't put reference list, okay? It's just references. Okay, now there are various ways how to cite your references in the reference list okay for this discussion this will be just a basic okay i'll be um expounding three okay but there are a lot more compli complicated um versions of it 
okay? Or depending on your source, okay? If it's a TED Talk, if it's a journal without author, if it's a journal without a date, of course, um, the website that I'll be um, forwarding later will help you. Okay, now, let's begin with the basics. Citing a book. You have the printed book, the hard copy book with you, and then you utilize it. So, if you're the type of person who borrows books from the library, I, I, I guess this is still my, um, I'm still an old soul. I like borrowing printed books and then read them. So, you have the book and you have to cite it. So, this is the format. Last name, first middle name, or just the first name of the author, year of publication, title of the book, italicized, period, space, publisher's name, period, space, DOI. Now, what is DOI? Uh, if it's available, if it's not available, it's okay. If it's a printed book, but sometimes you get in the in a in a uh, what do you call this one in a technological world today you can get a copy of ebooks right so if there's doi or digital object identifier okay so what is doi so i did a little research because i have to discuss this right so and i also have to know i won't be able to sleep if i don't know what doi is okay doi stands for digital object identifier so these are string of numbers and letters uniquely generated to identify the document on the web. Okay, so it's like a it's like a name or no, it's like the birth certificate of a document that is available on the World Wide Web. Okay, so that's DOI. So it's easier for us to access since it has a unique um, string of numbers and letters. So how are we going to apply it? or a sample, specific example. So, so for example, you have your Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So, the last name of the author, J.K. Rowling, and then we have title of the book, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and then the publisher name, Scholastic. There's no DOI, okay, because, of course, I got a printed copy of the book. All right? So that's how we cite it, citing a book. Before, with the previous version, aside from the publisher name, you also include the publishing place. But with uh, the updated version, I guess they removed it. I think we're gearing towards, you know, um, technological sources. That's why instead of having a specific, um, specific location of the publishing house, we prefer now DOI, Direct um, Digital Object Identifier. Okay, so that's for citing a book. And then let's have the second one. Second example, when we talk of um, reference list. Okay, hold on. There we go. Citing an online resource or citing an electronic source. Okay, so with this electronic source, I um, I utilize a website, okay, an academic website, Harvard Business Review, okay, but there are other instances wherein you cite, you encounter different websites. It's like a personal blog, it's an Instagram account, it's a tweet, tweet in Twitter, okay, but for this um, discussion's purpose, I, I'll be using a generic website, a acad generic academic website, okay? So, how do we go with it? How do you cite a website, okay? So, last name of the author in the website. So, for example, it's like an online newspaper. It can be first name, year, and this time, you'll also be including month and date, title of the page, title of the website, and then the site name and then url what is url this time so we have to go we have to understand the technical um terms that we're encountering it's not enough that we know that we need wi-fi we also have to know what is wi-fi wireless fidelity so okay url this time url stands for uniform resource locator or we also know it know this as link 
right? But for those who are in the field of um, computer science or technological science, they have to have the, I think I guess it would be better if they will expound it further. Okay, I'll just give you the the basic understanding. So it's a specific address to the World Wide Web. So if if a DOI is a specific identifier, this time URL is a specific address where you can find that document or you can find that specific um, source of data. URL or no, let's just put it. Let's in layman's term, we call it link. Okay, so send me the link. Or if you want to go more technical, you use the term URL. Send me the URL, something like that. Okay, now going back to APA. So here's an example. So uh, I got um, a discussion, an essay in the from the Harvard Business Review. So last name of the author is Failer. The first name is B. Year, month, date, 2020, June 26. And then, title of the page, or the title of the essay or the discussion, The Agile Family Meeting. And then, the website where I got it, it's Harvard Business Review. Then, period, space. Then, you include the URL. So, you don't need to add in retrieve from, okay? That's... One thing that I learned again while doing while preparing for this lecture before they add in retrieve from or when you type in in Google how to cite web how to cite website APA citation and then Google forwards an answer sometimes the answer given with the quick search of Google sometimes it's outdated that's why it's it's better to read and rely on more credible sources. Not that I'm saying Google is not credible. Sometimes Google forwards answers that are a bit outdated. Okay? All right. So that's how you cite an online resource. And then there are other, um, the other versions depending on the case, depending on, uh, on the source that you got. Okay? So last one, let's have... In the reference list, the last example that I will be discussing will be how do you cite a YouTube video? So yes, okay, you can also cite YouTube videos or TED Talks. But for this um, discussion's purpose, I'll be only using YouTube videos, okay? So we have here the last name, first name, middle initial, then the username in YouTube. It will be included in a bracket. Period space, okay, that's the usual, yeah, this, the period space has to be uh, an automatic thing in our brains when you write a paper, okay? After a sentence, you put in period space, then the next sentence. When you do reference list, it has to be automatic, period space, okay? Now, period space, you have to include in a, bra in a um, what do you call this one? A parenthet in parenthesis, year, month, date. Okay, and then, oh, I'm sorry, there, there should be period space here. Okay, period space, title of the video, and then period space, streaming service URL. Okay, so I think we've had an understanding what URL is, right? It was a previous um, slide. So here's an example. Last name of the author, first name. And then the username in YouTube is Japeti Guru, period space, the year, month, date, period space. The title of the video is APA style citation tutorial, something like this, okay, something like what we're doing right now. And then period space, the streaming service is YouTube, okay, and the URL is here. So no need to put in retrieved from, all right? So I hope we're clear with citing here. Now, we go with the general format of APA. So this, uh, I'll be discussing the technical parts, the more technical parts when it comes to APA citation, which is the format. General format. So first things first, what are the parts of an APA paper? Did I forget anything with, yes, okay. 
So, yeah, we're good, we're good. So, parts of an APA paper, general format. We have here title page, abstract, abstract main body references. There are four major parts of an APA paper. The usual part are the title page, the cover page, okay? Then the abstract. So, and then the main body, this is the the soul of your paper, okay? So, for example, if you're writing a, a research paper, so the main body includes five chapters, right? Chapter one, two, three, four, five. Depending on the school, depending on the college, sometimes they go with six chapters or sometimes they go with just four chapters, okay? And then, of course, the references and then the additional parts like the appendices, um, the transcript or, yeah, in the appendices, goes after the references okay so this is the general format but sometimes some teachers if it's just an essay a short essay they forgo with the abstract they just go with the title page the main body of the essay and then the references but it depends on you if you're comfortable with forwarding abstract but sometimes if it's a short writing they they remove the abstract okay Next one, when it comes to general format of a paper, and if you're using APA citation, font size and style, okay? Um, students often message me, Mom, what font size, what font style? When you talk of APA, APA recommends, okay? Um, they have various um, font choices, that are legitimate when it comes to APA, okay? And then, of course, it may depend on the academic institution, the instructor, the publisher, okay? But the vital thing when we talk of font size and style in APA citation that is that it has to be, or you have, as a writer, you have to be consistent with the font style that you're, you're using. So consistency is important, not just in relationship, but also in writing, okay? So consistency. So if you've used Calibri at the beginning, you have to go Calibri all the way, all throughout, okay? And then, of course, these are just recommendations according to the AP. But then again, it still depends, okay? So we have here Calibri 11 point, Arial 11 point, Lucy de Sans Unicode, Unicode 10 point, Georgia 11 point, Computer Modern is 10 point, and then Times New Roman is 12 point. Before, when I was in college, it was more than 10 years ago, um, we only have Times New Roman and Arial, but now they're also considering other um, um, font styles and font sizes. See, I, I, I was surprised to find out that Computer Modern 10 point is already part of APA uh, citation um, font choice font choices okay so it's interesting of course you know you, you know you want to be creative but this is an academic paper so you cannot use chiller comic sans or uh, hebrew okay so we go with the academic readable font size and styles okay next one let's have the spacing the answer is there it has to be double spaced okay so double space on all, except for the long quotation, remember? Long quotation with the sample, it has to be, it's indented, and then um, it's single spaced only, okay? And of course, there are certain exceptions to the rule, like for example, references in the appendices, but with the body of the paper, most parts of it will be double spaced or almost all parts of it will be double spaced except for the exceptions that were mentioned earlier, okay? And then after spacing, let's talk about alignment this time. So it's not justified. It has to be left aligned. You know, some students come to me, Mom, it doesn't look right for me. Sabi nila, Mom, it doesn't look well. It doesn't look right for me if it's not justified. All through my life, I'll be obsessively you know, uniforming my essays, and it has to be justified. But, you know, my dears, APA says it's left aligned.
Actually, it didn't directly say that it has to be left aligned. I browsed to the website, but with their sample paper, APA sample paper, it's left aligned. So, yes, it's left aligned. Okay, it's not justified. All right, after alignment, let's talk about running head and the header. Okay, so the general format, um, let's talk of the header. Okay, in the body of your paper, okay, there has to be header with all of the pages, aside from the page number. Of course, it's a lot easier when you have, for example, it's a lengthy, it's a lengthy paper, and then you have a table of contents. It's a lot easier if you have, you know, page number. And then um, the running, he the header is uh, the short version of your title. You got, you'll get this from your cover page, right? Or with your title page. So with the header, is not necessarily the first words of your title. It has to capture the essence of your entire paper. Short title for your paper so this is this is just an example miriam defensor santiago talks i was just rereading her book that's why you know i'm using her as an example so miriam miriam defensor santiago talks so that's my uh paper all about okay and it will be my header and then with my running head running head okay are different from header header is in the body of the paper Running head, on the other hand, has to be in the title page only, in the cover page only. It's on the left, upper left of your paper. But instead of having it as a header, you have to type it. You have to type running head, colon, space, and then the header that you have. But in this case, we call it as running head. And then there will be ellipses. Okay, so that's how you do it. Okay, running head, if you have your cover page or your title page. So that's the general format when it comes to uh, when it comes to the APA citation style and format. Okay. Now, as I've mentioned earlier that there's a possibility that this discussion might not be applicable anymore after like a year or so. Okay. Now, just in case, just in case, for example, in the future, you will, you still need to um, cite papers using APA format. This is the website wherein I, I this is my go-to website when when I need to cite papers, especially if it's APA. But aside from APA, Purdue Owl, okay, I usually call it Purdue Owl. Uh, it also discusses about Chicago MLA, okay. So Purdue Owl is a university, Purdue University, thank you so much. Okay, you've been a huge help in my academic life. Purdue Online Writing Laboratory, College of Liberal Arts, or um, um, Owl stands for Online Writing Laboratory. Okay, so I just call it Purdue Owl. Okay, they've updated their website already. So dark na siya ngayon. Before, it's just plain white, brownish, something like that. So this is my go-to website. So just in case, if there are missing parts with my discussion, you go here. You type in in Google, Purdue Owl, and then it gives you the link, okay? So, um, you know, it doesn't hurt to be updated when it comes to citation styles. Because, for example, before when I was writing, when I was in college, and even in post-grad, um, it's a general rule of thumb that you cannot cite sources from Wikipedia, because they say it's not credible because anyone can edit information in Wikipedia. However, some authors, some scholars are considering Wikipedia as a source as well. Wikipedia collates credible sources. And then if, for example, you're not happy with, uh, you want to go with the main source, Wikipedia has references at the bottom. But uh, Purdue Owl forwarded here that uh there is a way how to cite Wikipedia sources or wikis. That's how we call it, wikis, okay? So, yeah, the world is changing. And then you can also cite Facebook posts, Instagram photos, tweet, TED Talk, email correspondence, and other future electronic developments that we might have, 
Okay, so just in case you go here, you go with the Purdue Owl. Alright, so if you have questions, if you have clarifications, since this is a recorded um, recorded uh, lecture, please feel free to message me. Okay, I'll be putting in my um, I'll be putting in my contacts after this video for your reference. So thank you so much for listening. I hope you learned something. You got something from this lecture, and uh, I would appreciate if you learned what you have learned here and you share it. If you learn what you if you share what you've learned from this discussion to your other friends, to the other people in the academic field, and even in the non-academic field, so as to enlighten them with the points of plagiarism, how to combat, and the other aspects of plagiarism. APA citation. We have index. We have reference list, and then we have the general format, and of course, the easy. I guess the easiest way of you know sharing knowledge is to you know share URL, share the link. So here, okay, Purdue Owl. This is my go-to website when it comes to citation. But just in case in the future you've discovered other more credible websites, why not? Okay. So thank you so much, and I'll be stopping the recording.